Was I right? You've been an actor for 40 years? More. More than 40 years? Yeah. Yeah. How long? Yeah. You started in theater, radio, you've done it mm. all. Movies, television? Yes. Done it all. You have a large, as they say, body of work. Do you like watching yourself? I don't think I've ever asked you that. When you watch yourself, as Tony, are you no. amused with your performance? Very, very seldom. I, I can't stand myself. <laughs> No, that's not an unusual no. attitude for an actor or anybody, a performer, because you always look at it and you self-examine it and say, gee, I shouldn't have said that, I could have done better. No, Do I you just... like your recent work better than the very early stuff? I don't like anything I've done. You're kidding. No, I'm serious. Come on. I'm, I'm absolutely serious. I, I'm very, very, very critical of other actors' work. Yeah. And more so of my own. And in my own, I see, oh, the most awful things that uh really yeah you know, i can't forgive i see little things that i uh, don't feel like I, when i see i feel you make it look easy like you're like it's very simple and acting is not really simple but to make it look like there's no well, effort that's the, that's well, the, the trick whole, that's it? the whole thing to, to get so good that it, it's easy for you and it is acting is easy for me and i i believe i'm fairly adept at it how about still, being in the public eye are you adept at that being a being a celebrity I love it. Do you really? Love it. A lot of people say, oh, no, I want to hide out. They're kidding. They're lying. Don't Are believe they? them. Of course. In other words, you like it when people say, hey, Tony Randall. Yeah. I love it. Everybody loves recognition. Yeah. Except very stupid people who call me Oscar. Oh. <laughs> because that's stuck with you from, from the... Uh, oh, yeah. 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 But very nice people, if they're trying to be nice, say, thank you, Mr. Unger. They say that sort of thing. Oh. <laughs> but uh, I, I was walking. Walking down the street in my neighborhood in New York, guy has a great big carton. He's got old LPs for sale in it, used LPs. So I looked through the bin. I found two, uh, each marked clearly, 75 cents. Yeah. So I took those two. He said, that's $2. I said, it says 75 cents on each one. He says, yeah, but it's you. <laughs> you you're good for it, huh? You can spring for two bucks. <laughs> Anything, anything yeah, else? I was, I was walking down Madison Avenue and I saw a tie on the window. This is, this is absolutely true. It's, it's so good that it sounds like a made-up story, but it's not. And a very good-looking tie in the window. So I went in. Before I could say anything, the manager said, Oh, God! He said, Oh, don't in my store! I, 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 please, just a minute. Wait, wait, just a minute. Don't do a thing. He said, I gotta call my wife. He calls his wife, please, he said, talk to my wife, please, just say anything. She'll never believe me. Tell her, tell her, say hello, please. Yeah. And so you take the phone. The whole thing, the whole thing. He flattered me so much that I bought the tie and I bought six shirts. I, I didn't have enough money. More than that. Yeah. And you he said, I said, will you accept my check? He said, do you have any identification? <laughs> Are you familiar, excuse me for reminding him of the story, there, on Madison Avenue, somewhere in the 60s or 70s, there's a little shop that's been there for years. I assume it's still there. It's for polo gear. Have you ever seen it? And writing. Yeah. It's like polo mallets. It's on that polo mallets. Yeah. And I say, how can somebody make a living in New York City with a shop on Madison Avenue making just paraphernalia for polo players? Mm -hmm. And every time I'd go by, I see nobody in there. And for years, and the last time I was in New York, I'm not trying to top your story, no. and I tore off a little piece of paper, and I put a number on it, and I walked in, and I said, number 42. <laughs> <laughs> and the little man looks at me, didn't laugh, just looked at me, and I felt like such an idiot. Yeah. I was trying to like they do at Baskin Robbins, you know, yeah. 42, and the guy says, oh. So, you, had to, you really had to bend there, yeah, the little there. man. To see the shop and yeah, the no, polo no. gear. I can tell. Why you. did Why did no. I do that? I because you knew I had a better one. What? You knew I had a better one. You got and a better one. Yeah. Than this. Good. All right. I was. In, <laughs> why didn't I just shut up and let the guest? Do, I was doing in. Fine. No, 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 no. You set it up. I, I was in London. Oh. And I went into a liquor store to buy a bottle of Jack Daniels. <laughs> and the uh, clerk didn't have any. He said, "What is it?" I said, "Well, it's an American bourbon." He said, "Ah, I have bourbon." He bring, hands me a bottle of bourbon. I said, ah, that stuff's no good. I wouldn't wash my feet in that stuff. <laughs> and he said, I shall make a note of that, sir. <laughs> I shall make a note of that. <laughs> Big laugh. Big laugh on that punchline. I'll make a note of that, sir, but number 67, with nobody in there, with one little man and no line, gets nothing. No, no, no. 
Now, you, are you, it's because you told it wrong. I told it wrong, but why did I tell it wrong? Here's the way that story goes. First place, it took place in Nate and Al's out here in California. No. Yes. I did it. No, I did it in New York. No. You have to improve stories in order to get a good laugh out of them. Huh. Sort of like improving guests. I mean, okay. the analogy is similar right. to that, I suppose. Now, Nate and Al's on a Sunday morning is so crammed, mm -hmm. mostly with elderly Jews right. that you can't move, and right. you have to have a number. Mm -hmm. So th this morning it was crammed. And so much so that a little man in the middle of the crowd fainted. And they, they got him to the place. They said, get, get him some air, get him some air. They slapped his face, wake up, wake up, wake up. And he says, 62, I got him out. You see, that's the way you tell that story. No, 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 no you're right. No, no. How many vote for the polo shop? I do. I didn't tell it right. I didn't tell it right. Someone yelled 62, and he said, I want a quart of coleslaw. That's the way you said it. So now I, now I got it. Yeah, yeah. Is that in the book? No. That's not in the book. No. Okay, we'll be right back.